In this video, we'll create this minimalistic liquid Instagram reel. It's made by Apta Visuals and it went viral. I really love his minimalistic Instagram reels. And before I begin, I have something really exciting. The Social Creator Club Masterclass is live. The first 100 people that will join will get a discount. So click on the link in the description. People that joined the waitlist already got access yesterday. So do be quick. And in short, you will get video lessons about After Effects beginner to advanced, Premiere Pro beginner to advanced, edit like, deep dive sessions, sales mastery, and every project file that is linked to the tutorial, including this one, live Q&A calls, feedback rounds, and of course the VIP community. Again, link is in the description. Now let's jump into it. So let's first break down the Instagram reel. As you can see, the droplet drops into the water and basically disappears. Then we'll see a ball come up and we'll see this really cool ripple effect. And then after that, it will zoom out and it will reveal a glass of water. Now we're first gonna create some elements like the water droplets, the glass, and also the text. But what you can also do is go to free pick and find a glass that you like and basically use that as a base. In this case, I'm just gonna create it from scratch in After Effects. You can also create it in Figma or in Illustrator if you want to, or just download one of these glasses that you might like. Now let's create the elements first. First, I created a composition by going to new composition and choosing the social media portrait HD preset. Then I'm gonna create a new layer first by going to layer by clicking on the composition first, layer new solid and I'll create it black. And you can even call this a background so we know what we're working with. Now for the water droplet, uh, we actually need two shapes. One is basically just a circle, which we can just do by holding our mouse on the square and making sure the ellipse tool is selected. Then you just drag and hold shift and make sure nothing is selected. So make sure that nothing is selected, thumb, drag it out and we have this really ugly gradient and that's because it's set on gradient. So go into fill, change it to solid color and we'll just change the fill to white. I also think this is a bit too big but we can adjust that by pressing V from selection tool. We can move it around and we can scale it and hold shift to make sure that it will stay the same size. And just keep it small like this. And of course, also we're gonna center it by going into the align tool. Let's see where that is. Window align, there we go. Center it so it's completely centered and I'm happy with this. Now let's create the water droplet. So I'm just gonna say this is drop two and now the first one which is a bit more difficult which we're gonna try to make it a bit of the same size not too big basically i'm just gonna put my pen tool in the nothingness so basically here and just dragging it out like this and then holding shift to make it straight and this is perfect and then we'll just put a point in the top something like that and then again press to the bottom so we have this shape and this is basically a droplet shape now the only thing that you can see is that it's maybe a bit too not wide enough at the bottom so you can just hold shift to drag this out and when you press command it will snap and you can make it bigger and i will just make it something like this we can always adjust this later but i think this is quite cool i'm just gonna select this shape and i'm gonna select the bottom point and we do that by going into the shape opening up the shape going into contents going into the shape and then selecting the path and then select the bottom one and i'm just going to move it down a bit so uh, it's basically a bit more stretched something like this that looks pretty good now the fill i'm going to turn off for now you will see why in a moment i'm just going to press ok i'm going to add a stroke and just make sure that the stroke is set to gradient so click on the stroke and make sure that it's set on gradient a linear gradient and then press ok now press on the stroke and we're going to change this gradient maybe from like a blue or bluish color to like a more whitish color. Basically something like this. We can even move this over a bit, but we're gonna adjust the uh, gradient. And we're gonna do that by opening up the gradient stroke. And there you see the end point and the start point, and we can adjust that here. So basically, if we move this over, you'll see it move over. And if we zoom out, you can also see where the uh, gradient starts and ends. As you can see, it's in the middle. It's not where we want. We're just gonna move this over. So one at the top and one at the bottom. And you can adjust this accordingly as you like it. So maybe you really like it like this. Maybe you like it like this. And this is, of course, personal preference. Let's just make sure that it's centered a bit like this. Maybe I'm going to move it over like that. And maybe I'm also just going to decrease the stroke size because it, I think it's a bit too thick. So maybe like six or seven or something. Let's see how that looks like. Uh, yeah, this looks really cool. And now, of course, we're going to fill it. And to fill it, we're going to uh, go into the fill and then into the groove 
gradient tool and then press OK. And then we'll see uh, basically the same gradient appear. Now I'm just going to adjust the gradient by clicking on the gradient color. And I will just make it from white to like a darker color, maybe even black. I'm just going to remove these, delete and delete. And something like this, maybe move this over a bit, something like this. OK, and then we'll, of course, also need to adjust this gradient. So we're going to go into this gradient fill and you see the start point and end point again. Let's zoom out. Let's see where they are. And they are at the exact same spot. And that makes total sense. We're just going to move this over and we can even keep the same gradient positions if we want to or you can adjust it a bit again how you like it now the interesting thing is with this is that it basically looks like it's gonna fade into nothingness so the the inside will fade and the outside won't because there's a stroke so we're gonna move this a bit up and let's check it out again and this looks really cool i'm just gonna set it to full so we can really see how sharp and crisp it is and again i think this looks really cool and now to add something to this we can add a glow to this and the interesting thing is that we can do this later on basically on everything or we can do it per object i like doing it per object because then we can also adjust everything for example the threshold we can really dial down and then increase the radius like this like really high you get this really like faded look i would say now this is a really cool look and this is also really similar as the uh, as the style that we're going for again what you can do is just copy this glow over and just paste this on the other layer and as you can see it's maybe not like how you like it maybe decrease the radius a bit because i think in this case it needs to be a bit brighter like that and here we go. We have our first step of the way. Now we need our glass. And to create the glass is literally as easy as uh, using the uh, square tool. So we're gonna just grab the rectangle tool. I'm just gonna make a selection, make sure that nothing is selected and we're just gonna drag it out like this. And of course, we're gonna use the align tool again to center it. Let's see where it is and there we go. Now I will use this uh, gradient, but let's just see how we're gonna move it. We're gonna use the same gradient as the water droplet, but we do have to make some adjustments in the gradient. So we can just drag these gradient points out like this. And then maybe I'm gonna change the top to, uh, so I'm just going to press the fill and I will add a point here, make sure that it's white and something like this. And it will all come to life in a bit. We're just going to increase the uh, stroke a bit. And of course, we need to adjust the stroke. And again, if you don't see the points to change the stroke, you can just go into the rectangle, go into the gradient stroke and just click on start point or end point. And then it will basically reveal the strokes. And I think this is the oh, this is the middle one. And that is also the stroke that we're going to use. So we can uh, adjust this a bit how we like it, something like this maybe. And then of course we can increase the stroke to maybe 12 because in this case it can be a bit more noticeable. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our shape in our rectangle path and we'll have a size and position. Now right click the rectangle path and convert to Bezier path. And this will make sure that we can adjust the path accordingly. So if we now just go to the selection tool and we select both keyframes, or I mean both top points, we can move this over. And now what I would just do is just select one point and then move it out by holding shift and then pressing the arrow key right. So one, two, and then we'll select the other one and one, two, and we have our glass. Now being honest with you, I think the glass is a bit too white. So we can still adjust that by going into the path, by selecting the right points and then holding shift and moving it over like this. Now that's great select the shape and of course align this again let's go into the align center there we go now we need our liquid and i'm just gonna duplicate our layer i'm gonna turn off our stroke and then we can just scale it down and maybe move it over a bit making sure that it's in the glass now i'm actually just gonna select the uh, shape layer and then going into the shape contents rectangle and path and selecting the bottom ones i'm gonna move those a bit up and then selecting the top ones and I'm gonna move those a bit down 
and you just have to adjust it a bit how you like it maybe double click it and then scale it again i'm quite happy with this just need to adjust the gradient because i'm not happy with that yet you see if we look at our inspiration you can see a couple things we see basically the liquid being really like white at the top we see the stroke of the glass being also really white and yeah we can just adjust that but again this is also something personal preference you can create this uh, yourself and then maybe think like oh i want a red glass for now i'm just gonna select the bottom one and change the stroke to a solid color maybe decreasing the size a bit to uh, 10. Then selecting the top layer, going into the gradient fill, and I'm just gonna adjust it a bit. So let's just see how we're gonna adjust it. Something like this, something like this. And then on our bottom layer, I'm gonna change the gradient fill and make it go up again like this. So there's a bit of separation. Now, it might not look like the end result yet, but that's because we haven't animated it yet and also we didn't add the glow. And the glow really sells the thing. I'm just gonna apply the glow. So we're just gonna copy the glow over from uh, the other layer and paste it on here. And you will see that it really sells the effect. And of course we can adjust it again by decreasing the radius or maybe increasing the threshold a bit. So there's a bit of separation. I think the bottom one is also a bit too much being honest with you but we're already getting there. Now for the ripple, and I think this effect is so cool, we can just select the liquid. So basically this is the liquid and we can just add a ripple to this. Just add it to the shape and you will see that it hasn't done anything yet. But if we're gonna increase the radius, you'll see this really cool ripple effect getting a shape. Now we do have to adjust a couple settings. But basically I'm just gonna decrease the radius to maybe 10. So it's just around this ball. Then I'm gonna change the wave width. That already looks really good. Maybe increase the radius to 30. And as you can see, I'm adjusting this center of the ripple to really sell the effect. Now, one thing to note is make sure that the ripple is above the glow, because basically it's now rippling also the glow, which makes it a bit unrealistic. So just drop it above the glow, and this will make the ripple perform better, basically. Now we can do a couple things. We can or link this center of the ripple into our droplet, or we can just animate this. Basically making sure that, for example, let's say we're, we're gonna move in a bit and I'm just gonna press P for position and let's move this down to the bottom. Let's make sure that it's above the first glass layer so we can still see it when it goes down. Then make sure that it's cut off by holding Alt and then bracket to the right. Let's see what this looks like. It's already cool. We're just gonna move this over a bit to the top. And of course, we're gonna add motion blur, which is the most important thing to sell this effect. So enable the motion blur by selecting this icon. Now let's see what this looks like. That's cool. And then of course, we're gonna have our other droplet here, our small tiny ass droplet. We'll move this over and then hit Alt bracket on the left side. So basically it will cut off and then appear here. Then press P for position. Let's move it up and then back down by selecting the first keyframe, going a bit further and pasting it. Let's see what this looks like. And this looks really fake and that's because the middle one needs to be east east let's see what this looks like it's already better i might even go into the curve editor and making sure that the middle really like slows down like this it's perfect let's play it and i really like this look at that droplet going up it makes me really happy now when the droplet goes up then we'll move the ripple effect down so I'm just gonna make sure that the center of the ripple is keyframed and let's just go a bit further and then move the ripple down. Let's see what this looks like. This is a bit too harsh and I would say that's because the center of gravity shouldn't be too high. I think it maybe we'll press U for keyframes and then maybe move it over a bit and move the first keyframe down a bit. We can even adjust the speed and this looks really good. After our effect is done, then we can basically keyframe the height of the wave. So make sure that it dies down a bit to make it more realistic. So we're just gonna keyframe the height and set it to zero and let's see what this looks like. Perfect. Now, going back to example, the text is really easy, guys, because the text is literally just small winds uh, with a glow on it, and then it zooms out, and then you'll see the glass, basically, the opacity turns on a bit, and then you'll see the text add up. Now, I will show you quickly on how to uh, basically do that camera movement, because I know a lot of people want to know that, and in this case, you can work with a camera, but I would just 
easily create a null object. So go to layer new null object. And what we can do then is select all our layers except our background layer and we can parent them to the null. And what this does is basically says, hey layers, just look at the null and every movement that I do to the null, move with it. So if I now move the null, it will move everything in our composition. That also means that if we use the scale, so we press S for scale, it will zoom in. And again, you can do this with a camera, but sometimes it's overcomplicating things. So in this case, we can zoom it in really far like this. The droplet will, there will be a droplet, and then we can slowly zoom it out. And of course, like always, you can also select the keyframes and then easy ease it. Go into the graph editor and then maybe move it over a bit. I'm just gonna move this one up like this and then also move it over a bit let's see what this looks like and there we go a really smooth scale and zoom out now after adjusting the gradients a bit you will get something like this and i think the liquid effect is such a cool effect that you can use in a lot of projects but also this minimalistic glow style is really cool again don't forget to join the masterclass by clicking the link in the description down below you will get more tutorials like this going way more in depth of course also don't forget to subscribe and then i'll see you next time